Welcome once again to our Radical Collaboration Series that we are running with Kahiso Trust, where we focus on stakeholders participating in improving the quality of service delivery, as well as governance at local level in particular. And today we're going to discuss more the collaboration aspect of improving levels of service delivery in municipalities or at municipality level. Paul Smith is local government support head at Kahiso Trust. He's here with us to talk to us from their perspective, how they got to be involved in helping municipalities. And Sakhen Tlabezo is program director of the Makanda Circle of Unity, the collaborative civic coalition. And uh, both of them will be sharing with me their experiences. Gentlemen, welcome. And Paul, let me go right away to you because we have discussed this before about the history of Makanda's problems uh, at community level there and how you got to be involved. And from then, we'll talk to where we are now. How did you get uh, to be involved there? Yeah, thank you, Tim. Um, it was an interesting story. We are supporting the municipality around various elements of revenue management to try and protect their revenue streams. And uh, the Kahisa Trust Board really asked us to look at ways of, of uh, giving voice back to communities and how do we uh, how does our work impact communities in a more positive way and directly so um, we started looking at various interventions with the municipality to strengthen strengthen the skills that may directly affect uh, uh, marginalized communities but only to realize that there was a bigger problem at play which is the um, general polarization of communities um, and the enabling environment for development. So we, we reiterated our approach and uh, started working with key stakeholders in Makana to try and find a different way of bringing voice back to community and, uh, and encouraging local development to be more community centric. And so that started with a, a series of, of community dialogues and there were a number of early adopters and uh, the early adopters started meeting more frequently and decided on a way forward which uh, really led to the formation of the Makana Circle of Unity. But interesting in, the, in this path was that we, we found it really important to get the municipality's permission to engage with community uh, because uh, when you start interfering with people's constituencies without their permission, it becomes a bit sensitive. So the municipality gave us full permission to engage their communities, and here we are uh, now with uh, a reasonable civic coalition that's starting to engage the municipality in a more meaningful way. But it wasn't as smooth sailing as all that, I would like to believe, Paul, much as Sake, you, you must respond to this question. In a sense that I can imagine the, polit the sensitivities of the local political actors, the local political parties, and so on, who would be thinking, what is Paul and Paul and others, what are they trying to do here, muscling in on our territory? And yourselves as members of the community, if you are not appropriately organized, it would be difficult for you to know what contribution you can make to the deliberations that regard the governance and the service delivery at your level. So tell me the story from your perspective. How did you get to be involved? Uh, from my perspective, yes. Fantastic. Thanks, Tim. And I think you know, you, you touched on something quite important as you're closing off your question there, this idea that we can't, particularly within the context of my kind of frame ourselves as being separate from the community. We're very much part and parcel of the community as active community members ourselves. Uh, and the journey from my perspective, I think, is the journey of the collection of efforts of many people and entities, be it in very visible or invisible ways, who have in some form or facet wanted to contribute to uh, forward-oriented, impact-oriented activities in the context of Makanda. Um, so the circle of unity is the product of uh, I'd put it the commitment of a variety of people in many different ways, both tacit in principle and in resourcing. The university, for example, has played a very critical and crucial role in providing an anchor with a number of different academics and entities within the institution working as part and parcel of this entity and language of collaboration within the context of the city. I always frame it as we are very much in the process of growing and developing and, and fostering the relationships that are necessary to lead to the impact we really need. We, we're not where we would ideally want to be, but I think, and as Paul would reflect on this, we're starting to see the inroads of the many conversations it's taken to get here, and it has taken 
very much a lot of conversations, a lot of engagement, and a lot of very tricky uh, stumbling blocks. Metaphorically, the path here has been, and some might argue ironically, but it's been riddled with potholes and moments where we had to take different turns that we weren't prepared to take. Um, moments then we found that even some of the earlier doctors might not have committed for as long because it wasn't moving either in the same trajectory or at the pace that would have been appreciated. And we take no, no offense to that. I don't think anyone working in the space of trying to build a common purpose and common language among stakeholders uh, would. Uh, but we understand that we are on this journey at some point and we move with who we have. At some point, we encounter each other further on as we grow and develop and create and foster this language of collaboration in the context of the city. What's really very important is as we're trying to encourage different entities and state bodies, including the municipality, to form part of this venture and create pathways to work with partners in the city, we want to render quite explicit the individual gains of the partner institutions and in what they're doing. Um, forming part of a collaborative entity is not to render your individual development or your work null and void. If anything, it, it creates space for us to collectively celebrate that work uh, and particularly for what it contributes to the growth of the city. And, and when you look at the journey from that angle, it becomes a very tricky turning journey, but it's been absolutely worthwhile in terms of slowly building a base that supports the overall vision. And elsewhere in the country, we've seen the emergence of coalitions and coalitions of different political parties. And the context or of the situation in Makanda is somewhat different here, Paul. Can you tell me what, what, is, what is different here with this civic coalition? And why was it important that you structure it in the way that it is structured now? Tim, you know, I, su I suppose collaboration and coalition go hand in hand. And, and I suppose coalition really is dependent on the purpose of parties getting together for a common purpose. And uh, in Makana, it was quite important that on the onset of the Makana Circle of Unity, that they drafted a constitution. And the constitution was very clear that it was going to adopt a, a distributive leadership model, which allowed many people to play a role in an area of interest uh, without necessarily being a leader in the community. But it also was going to be apolitical and uh, it was going to work with the municipality and not against the municipality. And I think these are fundamental um, uh, elements of a, a civic coalition that's going to support local development. Um, and this really differentiated the Makana Circle of Unity from the type of litigation that was taking place at the time. So people could actually find themselves both litigating and playing a role in, uh, in, the, in the development process. And so uh, when setting up coalitions, be very conscious of the purpose of that coalition. Uh, the wrong purpose can lead to a very disruptive environment. So... Um, uh, yeah, so we we're very comfortable that everybody that participates in the in the civic coalition and remember that stakeholder collaboration includes the municipality. They are a stakeholder, and so uh, the purpose of getting together uh, is very important to the the outcome that can be expected. So, okay, tell me more about the NGO that, that you established and and how it functions, because I can imagine I mean different desperate. Um, interest groups can come together, each one of them articulating their aspirations that may be in conflict with the other party's interest, right? And then you end up fighting without being the main political players there, not being a political party. So how, how did you manage to bring your interests together and win the confidence of the, those who are politically in charge of the municipality there? Yeah, thank you very much, Tim. And I think it's it's... It's a story, again, like I was saying earlier, that needs to be told in, in honor of the various persons that were around to help contribute to the formation. You know, prior to the final setup of the Makanda Circle of Unity, there were two big stakeholder conversations that were called in the city of Makanda, uh, very much also anchored by the different uh, key stakeholders. Paul, I think it was part of them at the time. Uh, the vice chancellor of the university was very much at the core of it. And the conclusion of them was that, well, listen, we need to form this entity and different stakeholders offered different elements of contributions to it. So, for example, the university said, well, we will we will fund the appointment of someone to help manage this project. We are committed on that level. Uh, so Trust has become a consistent partner to help say, we'll elevate the projects you're doing where possible, we'll either contribute or, or, or help build something into 
the, the work of the circle of unity uh, and other stakeholders have done so in different ways. Now that journey has gone through a variety of iterations over the years and has really come to become a structure where we create what I like to think of as a language of working together. Um, and this is quite, quite important in a, in a politically contentious space like Makanda and Makanda is. But what it allows is that the circle becomes not necessarily an umbrella, but a banner or an entity where we can pull together organizations that previously may have had different competing entities to start to work together on a point of mutual common interest. Um, and it's an active journey. We, 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 it has taken time to start building the trust, but part of the trust has been built through just constantly saying, we'll walk, walk this journey with you, we'll form part of the engagements, we'll make ourselves visible. And I think there's still much more that needs to be done. But what's exciting to reflect on now is that we're watching a growing group of, of some older institutions, some existing institutions, who are expressing interest in forming part of this joint collaborative entity. And I think that's the first uh, offshoots or, or green shoots, so to speak, that show that the work we're trying to do in the context of the city is slowly moving forward. Um, that is included in the fact that we're able to start building a, an engagement with the municipality uh, uh, and engage with different partners and persons within the institution with the common aim and common purpose being, how can we start to work together towards building something good in the city? One of our biggest areas of success thus far in growth has been in the education sector, which is such a profoundly important part of the Makanda economy, uh, wherein we've worked with a very strong education cluster that includes principals from no fee paying schools, uh, public schools, uh, education NGOs, private schools, who sit together around a table and reflect on some of the tricky problems of the education sector of the city. And in different ways, some big, some small, pledge not only support and endorsement, but also offer of themselves to building a collectively shared and owned education sector. Now, this community of purposes is really beautiful for what it can do in a space like Makanda, not only because we're struggling as a city, but because we're able to start modeling a new way of being that I think could have a resonance and ramification in different parts of the country, if not the world. Let's talk about the, the benefits that you have seen, I mean, emerge as a result of the approach that you were describing now. I mean, the, the practical benefits. Mm. 100%. One of them is, uh, and I'd look towards this education sector um, and how we've been able to pull together different schools to work with each other. I think that's been really important in Makanda. And to be quite clear, we're, we're coming on the heels of other entities and NGOs having done long-term work to help improve the context of the education sector in the city. Another key benefit that I think is quite important, and perhaps Paul can reflect on this at some point, one of the benefits that we've achieved as a circle of unity and the outcomes is uh, the bringing together, or the pulling together of entities and persons and organizations under a common banner who at the past may not have even wanted to connect because of a difference of perspective and political opinion. Um, being able to represent an entity of this nature and form part of a collaborative structure of this nature has also allowed us to reach out to state agencies and state entities, not even from the point of objection, but from a point of saying, as an entity that is concerned with how we are working together in the context of the city, we want you to come and respond to these problems. And these are things that are really quite important. We found more and more uh, organizations have started sort of speaking openly about their involvement in this entity and how they find value in saying, well, maybe one of the big solutions we must take in Makanda is this thing of can we pull each other together at a point of commonality? Um, now, a lot of these benefits are currently a bit invisible or perhaps a bit tacit, but what they are is very clear seeds of a shift in perspective from the people who work in the city towards this idea that through working together, we can work meaningfully quite well. And I think the orientation shift has meant that we're able to tap into a variety of stakeholder networks and say, listen, we've got this key matter that's taking place, this key public or community perspective. We think it's important if you're present. We think it's important if you're here. Uh, when uh, national departments come down to do oversight visits, we're able to reach that network and say, well, instead of doing individual submissions, do you have an appetite to make a joint submission? Because then we can demonstrate our collective commitment as a variety of entities to responding to this problem. Uh, and from a point of commonality, not a one voice, so to speak, that renders null and void what some people might say. So we're seeing these green shoots start to really come alive. And I think that's, that's something that we can see a lot more of 
uh, in the coming time. Uh, couple that with the fact that some entities just say, well, I want to contribute something to the space. Um, so, for example, the, the, the business school at Rose University has offered up itself to develop an aspiring leadership course for school uh, for bargaining school leaders that they're doing as a way of sharing their expertise under the guise of the circle of unity and their contribution to saying we want to help contribute to this collective project to improve the state of Makanda. Paul, having been extensively involved in the project in, uh, in uh, at Makanda at, at local level there, but there is a particular approach I think that you adopted to make sure that it happens. You know, I mean, somebody watching this and listening might think. Well, it's worked in Makanda. All you do is you walk in there in any community and people will agree with you and off you go. But I suppose there are steps that have to be followed or at least that you followed in your case. Yes, thanks, Tim. Um, the biggest thing is we must understand that we're expecting behavior change from people because um, polarization is really dis is, is rendering our communities and municipalities dysfunctional at the moment. And uh, so when we look for behavior change, it takes time to, to build trust with people and convince them of an alternative approach to finding solutions. And it's not about, uh, and, and for many people, it's very comfortable and easy to sit on the fence and, th and throw stones at the problem. Uh, we believe that uh, we want to encourage people to, to become active citizens and become uh, actively involved in the solution and, uh, and not just remain part of the problem. Um, the approach in, in, in the Makana project was um, really to start helping people make sense of their current environment. Uh, civil society, when we first got there, described themselves as a circular firing squad. People wanted change, couldn't agree on what change, and couldn't agree on how to get that change, how to achieve it. And so there were very not many insular activities taking place and none of which really made a fundamental difference to the way the, uh, the town functions. And so people started uh, buying into So as people delve deeper into issues to make more sense of them, they're able to see the wood for the trees and realize that there needs a transition from individuals from an egocentric perspective to a system-centric perspective so that they uh, make decisions in the interest of the whole community. Once this has been achieved, it's really important to structure and organize civil society in a way that enables them to collaborate meaningfully. And, uh, and that's what the Makana Circle is currently in the process of trying to do. And that means people have to come together, elect people that may represent them, and start engaging the municipality and building trust with the municipality. Uh, because trust in this whole process is really important. Uh, the, the second component is the municipality. How does the community collaborate with a municipality that's dysfunctional. To be a reasonable collaboration partner, you have to have a certain level of functionality to be respected and taken seriously by community. So a lot of our work was is around uh, the municipality, how do we engage the, the councillors and the senior management team, how do we build leadership and encourage people to become open and vulnerable to engaging community. And in the case of Makana, this is starting to take place. We see stakeholders forums where the council is standing up and say, there's no more us and them. We're happy to engage and starting to move into more concrete engagement processes. And on the other hand, from community side of things, there was an article in the Herald last week uh, by uh, the um, chair of the MCU really calling out uh, another colleague in the media for unbalanced reporting because all they did was report on the negative issues associated with the town, and uh, they wanted them to also report on the role that communities playing in collaboration with the council to improve the situation. And so those uh, small uh, attitude and position changes of people in, in power and, and in authority and those who influence others is fundamental. And then the last really important component is how do you mobilize these stakeholders to implement the type of change that community desires. And, and I think this is where the real challenge comes in. And this may be a, a real opportunity for an NGO like the Makana Circle Unity that has a strong governance structure that it can attract philanthropy or other funding to implement projects that are meaningful community. And one, for example, which Saki may have mentioned while I, was, while I lost signal, was the uh, collaboration to um, to attract government funding and employ 
uh, unemployed youth in the town to both clean up the town, fix potholes, and do another a number of other projects. This means 1,700 odd people get employment. This is the benefit of collaboration, where people really find common purpose and are committed to to the to common change that's desired by the greater community. So that's really the approach. It's a it's a four pronged approach, and we believe that it's scalable because it's it's not issues based. Every town in South Africa has problems. And I think uh, this model enables people to come together because when you get good heads around the table, one and one equals three. It's exponential quality of thinking and creativity to, because our complex problems that we have require complex solutions. Sure, thanks very much, uh, Paul. And uh, Sake, let's talk about Makanda's circle of unity. And I'm wondering if the same can be replicated elsewhere given its unique features. And of course, as much as we're talking service delivery here and uh, governance and all of the great outcomes that we've just, uh, we've just mentioned yourself and Paul, um, in the political space, there's always competition, right? Somebody might say, I've got a party here, I want to be elected councillor. Why should I give up the opportunity to be the influential uh, individual or organization in this particular community? So if you allow outsiders to come in, then they take over your responsibility. So can it be replicated elsewhere on the basis or on the back of your experience? I believe so, Tim. I think, and I think it boils down to what the core element of it is. Uh, and this is why I'd, I'd like to call the work at its, the synthesis of it is creating a language of working together more than anything. Now, what this means is that what is at the driving heart of this entity and this NGO as it is Makanda, uh, is the idea that we can sit around a table as a collective on a non-partisan basis, on an apolitical basis, and reflect, and reflect on matters of common and shared interest in our context together, and then find ways where we could mutually work with each other to respond to those issues. If that is the core, the scaffolding of it, that can be replicated. What it does require, though, is committed people who are willing to invest in what will be, at times, a long journey. Because as Paul uh, highlighted at the start, you're also working to respond to people's own perspectives and the long-term ideas they've had of what change looks like. And ultimately, one of the trickiest elements, which is also the most beautiful element because of what it produces, is that the biggest investment you can put into a project of this nature or setting up structures of a similar entity is time. If you're willing to invest the time into building those relationships, building the trust, I can guarantee that in time you'll see the outcome of them because then there's more willingness to say, well, I've got something I can put towards this. I've seen the investment in the commonality of interest. I've seen that you are just as committed to change as I am. So let me give my piece in the same realm of this shared common interest. And I think that's the real thing that becomes appeal. It's less a partisan image. It's less an entity image. It's less even a collective name or identity. It's finding ways of responding to a commonality and shared purpose in ways that we can all play a meaningful role in it. It may take a long time, and I must admit that much, it can take a long time, and at times feel quite lonely. But if you commit to working with it and working on it with the ones who want to walk the journey with you, there is something meaningful that can emerge regardless of the context. Well, I've, I'm learning a lot uh, from this engagement with yourselves, but uh, as we conclude our discussion. I'd like to hear, Paul, starting with you briefly, tell me, at an individual level, is there much that you can do or do you need to come to the party as a member of an entity or a group of people in order to make any meaningful contribution to a setup such as the uh, Makanda Circle of Unity? Yeah, I think just I just wanted to add one comment to Saki's comment. Um, we also under no illusion that there's there's many people out there that don't want to see structured, organised collaboration uh, for greater purpose of community. Because there's many people who want to exist in a a, a state of confusion. It, it enables their own agendas. So so we under no illusion that we're going to have to walk the path and maybe kiss many frogs before we find the prince. And we are, and I think these types of solutions uh, only work for those who are ready to adopt. But I think in every community, there are people that are ready to adopt. And the, the individual uh, um, contribution starts with, with uh, active citizenry and getting involved. And I think this can start with, with uh, turning out at, at voting polls, et cetera. And then 
um, the minute you get a few people with uh, the the urge to to get involved in, in improving the community, uh, the better for all because that positive momentum will grow in time. And it just takes one or two people to get together and attract a few um, early adopters that are influential, um, and and the snowball starts rolling. Um, we've just got involved uh, in setting up a group of people called the TAN a Town Action Network. Uh, and that's on that network, we've got 300 people across the country that are trying to make a difference in their small towns, but they're feeling quite isolated at the moment. So we want to give them some support environment to and encouragement and maybe even some resources if we can to continue their good work, work and build more circles of unity so that they can start having the influence in their own small towns. All right, Sake, as we conclude, tell me, I mean, individuals can play a role here on the back of what you've just said. And, and I'm speaking, you know, typically many individuals in the communities in the country think our problems are too huge for an individual to be concerned with. So we sit on the sidelines and wait for somebody to make stuff happen or we just come out to on voting day, participate and then walk away and hope that problems will somehow resolve themselves. Individuals can play a meaningful role here in a circle of unity like you have in Makanda? I 100% believe so, Tim. And I think what's important is also to be quite clear. Look, even as we are slowly growing and becoming a a well-known entity in the context of Makanda, we by no means represent or reflect the full constituency of non-profit organizations or community-based organizations in the context of the city. We represent those that have wanted to work with us. In the same realm, we celebrate those that are doing work that is community and impact-oriented, regardless of whether or not they're part and intimate members of ours. And I think that's very important is that you know, the birth or the extent of the death, sorry, an extent of negative news isn't limited just to Makanda. If anyone wakes up and watches the news two or three times a day, you might find that there's nothing to believe in or nothing to anchor us as a country and as a nation in this current context. Uh, so we need that sense of what are we living for? And to be quite honest, I don't think I have the answer. I do know that what is important is to find a sense of value and resonance in community. And if you can do that and find a way to play a role in your community, it creates a completely different narrative and way of being than it would if we just lean back and wait for a magic silver bullet or savior to come. And I think that can take the form of creating circles and entities and groupings of people coming together and saying, look, we'll put our political differences aside. We just want to respond to our problem. In whatever iteration it looks like, I believe it's important to do so because at its heart, at its core, it doesn't strip the individual of what they believe or what they hold important and most dear to them. But what it does, it says, perhaps we can find a shared purpose as people and for however long it takes, we will commit and join that journey. And I think that's the most beautiful part of it all is we can build a sense of community with each other, for each other, and that is ultimately what carries us. And if that can work in other spaces, we might start to see a meaningful shift over time. Well, as the saying goes, if Makanda can do it, so can everybody else. And uh, thank you, gentlemen, for sharing with me this beautiful story of how you put the uh, circle of unity together and uh, how it's progressing. Work in progress, obviously. Still many challenges ahead that have to be resolved. But in the meantime, let's not just sit on the sidelines. Let's learn from you and see what we can do to improve situations in uh, uh, Madi Beng, in Haman Skral, in Le Kwa, elsewhere in the country. Paul, thank you very much. And uh, Sake, thanks again for having been part of this discussion. Appreciate it.